Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Friday Assembly. First of all, well done on completing your first full week of remote learning. What an achievement. Secondly, we'd like to say how proud we are of all of you. We know that this has been a really tough time and you have shown resilience and confidence in meeting that challenge. I've been privileged enough to teach lessons over the last week, but also to pop in and see some different subjects. And I've been so impressed with the quality of the work that you're producing, but also your engagement in these lessons. You're really getting stuck in and we're really proud of you. I know that teachers have been handing out merits um, and Mrs McCann as well is going to be looking at attendance and also the number of merits that students have achieved and handing out some additional awards as well. So well done to all of you. This morning I'm going to be talking you through two new aspects of Microsoft Teams. Um, I know that we've all had to get very familiar with Teams very quickly, myself included, uh, so well done for that. Uh, it's not easy, um, but hopefully I can share some information that will make um, these two elements a bit easier for you to use. Okay, so Microsoft Teams assignments. Uh, I know that we have had a couple of issues with assignments, especially at the start of this week. We have fixed those problems and you should all be able to now access assignments through your Microsoft Teams homepage. If that isn't the case, or if you're having any issues with this, please let us know and we can help you to get those sorted. So Microsoft Teams assignments is where all the work for your lessons which are not live will sit. So for most of you, for example, um, period one, you would not have a live lesson and your teachers will set work for you. And this is where that work will be. Um, so there's several ways you can access assignments. Uh, you can either click on the assignments tab, um, but if you click on your activity tab, you will be able to see um, your assignments there as well. The great thing about assignments is they work very in a very similar way to uh, class charts. So you have a deadline um, and also an idea of the length of time that you will need to spend completing the work. And your teacher can also include helpful links and other information. So say a worksheet or something else that might support you to complete the task uh, within the assignments as well. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about today is class notebook. Um, this is a great resource and we're only kind of just beginning to explore the possibilities with it. So there'll be lots more things that we can do. At the moment, Class Notebook is where all of your work will sit. So that is everything from your notes in class to assignments. You can also put homework in there as well. Um, and it's private, so only you and your teacher can see the work. Now, this is really helpful because Imagine that I'm going to set, for example, um, an assessment, something that I want students to do themselves. Um, they can upload that here. I can mark that. They will be able to see their feedback, but other people from the class won't be able to. So it's a great space for you to use for just your work. I think a really helpful way to think of Class Notebook is like an electronic exercise book. So you use it in the same way that you would your exercise book in class. You can also use Class Notebook to share resources. So there's a content library and a collaboration space. So I might, for example, upload um, notes for a lesson or um, some additional reading in the content library so everyone can see that, everyone can access it. There's also a range of different tools that you can use. So you can upload pictures, you can edit them, you can draw. Um, there is also a maths feature, so you can do maths work here as well, and you can record. So say if you were going to do something for music, um, you'd be able to do that on Class Notebook as well. So next, I'm going to tell you a little more, a little bit more about how you get into Class Notebook and how you can use it. OK, so where can you find Class Notebook? So the easiest way to get to Class Notebook is to click on any of your teams. So these are the classes that you would normally be in in school. And you will see across the top of your menu bar that you have a number of options. Um, so posts and files, I know, are ones that people have been using a lot. Um, and Class Notebook just sits after that. Once you've chosen a Class Notebook, uh, you should get a welcome page uh, with a couple of options across the top. 
and then you need to click on the image. Now, being an English teacher, I feel it looks like three small books in the top left hand corner of your screen. But other people may have different opinions on that. Um, so once you've done that, you're then into the notebook space. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about what you can do here. So now you're into the general class notebook. Your view will look slightly different to your teachers. So you will only be able to see these folders. So collaboration space, content library, and then your own personal notebook. So you won't be able to see anyone else's notebook. When your teacher looks at it, they'll be able to see all of the names of the students in your class and their notebooks. So the view is slightly different. So you just choose your name from the list and then um, a number of folders will pop up. So you can see those here on the right hand side of your screen. So you've got a couple of options there, homework, handouts, quizzes, class notes and assignments. These are already all set up for you, but your teacher can add other files if you need them, um, subject specific ones maybe. So how can you upload your work? Well, this is really easy. Firstly, you just select the file where you want the work to go. So I've chosen class notes. So I'm going to be uploading some work that I've done maybe during a live lesson that I want to keep in my exercise book. I need to refer back to it later on. That will then open up a sort of word style document. It should look quite familiar to you. You can see it at the bottom of my screen there and you just need to then give that a name. Make sure that you give it a sensible name, something that you are going to remember and that links to your class. So I've called mine really simply Unseen Poetry Lesson 2. So now you've got a name for your piece of classwork, you can upload a file or an image to that. So you've got a couple of options. You can see on the taskbar in the middle of the page, you can upload a file or a picture. Um, you can upload links and, and audio as well, but for the purposes of today, I'm just going to talk you through how to upload a file and it's the same for a picture. You just click on picture instead of file. So when you click on file, you get a drop down menu that appears, insert file attachment or insert file printout. So you can either do that as a PDF or a Word file. I would suggest doing it as a Word file because it's a little bit easier. So you'll then get the option to choose a file from somewhere in your computer. So presumably you've saved that work that you've been doing. You can then click on that, select insert, and then it will appear in your class notebook. So you can see on the screen at the bottom there, my work has appeared there, saved as a Word document. So I can open that, I can edit it, um, I can also add notes to that page, um, but that will stay saved in my class notebook as my work from that lesson. As I said earlier, there are literally hundreds of things that you can use your class notebook for. And as we start to use this together, I'm sure that many of you will come up with things that I haven't even thought of yet. The final thing I wanted to share with you today is a really simple thing that you can use during a lesson to make notes. So if your teacher uploads notes for the lesson as a PDF file into your collaboration space in your class notebook, you can then click on that, open it, and using the draw tool on the top menu bar, you can then highlight, annotate, make all kinds of notes on it. You can't change the text because it's a PDF document, not a Word document, but you can then save your annotations into your classwork file so you'd have just your notes so that's one thing i'm going to be trying with my classes today i'll let you know how that goes um, and i look forward to hearing all about the different ways that you're going to be using class notebook in your lessons i'm going to hand you over now to mr john and he's going to be talking to you about the class timetables good morning everybody mr john here i hope you're all well I'm going to do a little bit of your assembly today about home learning and the new school day and the new school week. All right. So we're going to start with the timetable. Now, the best way to find your timetable is to go on the website. On the website, there's lots of explanations, but this is the best place to see your online learning timetable to begin with. If you've got your actual timetable with you, it's not a bad idea too. So we're going to have a look at the website now. Well, this is the home page, and if you hover over students, 
then click on home learning it will take you to where you need to go easy right so this is the home learning page and as you can tell at the moment there isn't a timetable on it you're going to need to scroll down slightly to find that and i'll show you in a second however whilst we're here you can see a couple of the videos at the top that you might want to watch to help you with your home learning and as you read through the page you'll find lots of guides and tips on how to log into different places or how to access different things you might need to help you with your home learning but i'm going to show you your timetables now so here we are we scroll down until we've got to the bit that's obviously a timetable now you'll see it automatically goes to year seven all right but if you click on where it's highlighted at the top on your tab it will take you to your your year groups timetable all right so if you're in year nine click on the year nine it'll show you what you're expected to be in that day or that week so we're zooming in on year seven all right let's look through their timetable and what it means on a monday morning you can see highlighted we have form time and that's for all year groups on a monday morning so get yourselves up get yourselves logged in and listen in to your form you'll be buddied up with another form it might not be your tutor but there'll be two tutor groups in there doing a little bit of form time on a monday morning to get your head in the right place and to get yourself ready to do some learning there's three sections for reading so on the student shared area there's now a folder called reading and each day we're going to upload a little bit more of a book that our teacher has read and you'll be able to listen in and instead of having reading in a form time you'll have a little bit of an online audio book as read by a teacher and then finally you will also have an assembly one day a week at the moment that's going to be a friday but look out it might change okay so then on to the lessons in the day lesson one and lesson three are going to be set on teams as you can see on this timetable year tens yours might differ slightly so look out for yours but you log into teams you go into what lesson you would normally have period one on that day or period three on that day and you see the work that's been set by your teacher and you complete it in that hour and then the bright yellow ones are your live lessons yep so on a monday period two on a week b you're going to have an english lesson with an english teacher it might not always be your normal english teacher but it will be an English teacher. So log in, click join, and listen to your lesson. All right, then the last little bit from me is just about homework and a reminder that you are still going to get a bit of homework set on class charts. So do remember to log in and check that, all right? If you've forgotten or you've lost your code, email your tutor. Just send them a quick message and they can send you your code back, all right? Okay, so quick recap then. Timetables are all on the home learning page on our website. You've got form on a Monday and assembly on a Friday at the moment, but that might change. And you've got reading on all the other days, which is available on the shared drive. Remember, if you're struggling, you can go on the website, again on the home learning page to find some guys and some help. And remember to upload your work onto Teams when you've done it so your teachers can see it. Finally, homework is still on class chart. So get logged in and email your tutor if you've forgotten your code. All right, good stuff. That's all from me. Hope you're all well. Keep safe. Be good. Do lots of work. And we hopefully will see you all sooner rather than later. All right. Bye.